to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. At the Deep Adventure Ministries, we believe that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. I always think one of the most uh, dramatic uh, illustrations, illustrations of that is jumping out of an airplane. You know, there's that moment of kind of fear and you're not really sure, especially the first jump, you're not so sure if you're really ready for all of that. And you look at an airplane and there may be a dozen other people in the plane. And then one by one, they start, the plane gets fewer and fewer people. And you're like, wait a minute, that's not supposed to happen. But then finally, what you'll see is when people finally make that jump, there is this, uh, on most people's faces, there is this look, the look of kind of fear and terror is immediately transferred into this look of just a dramatic excitement and joy. And, and that is what um, it's like to abandon yourself to God's will. There's that free fall. There's that moment of, of making that leap of faith when you 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 jump out and your arms are spread open, and your your let your whole body is uh, spread open wide, and you're just receiving pure oxygen. In fact, some people say you don't even need to breathe when you're free falling because the oxygen's pouring right into your skin, uh, and that should be the feeling of that total moment of abandonment. There's kind of that apprehension, and there should be because it's it, it costs you your whole life. When you give your life to the Lord, He wants all of you. So you make that leap of faith. And there's that free fall. And as you're falling, it's really hard to see. You know, the, the wind is coming by so fast, even in your goggles, that it's hard to kind of perceive, you know, where you are, especially when you first jump. And then all of a sudden, you've dropped a mile out of the sky. And, uh, and uh, you feel your canopy. You pull your canopy, and the canopy opens. And then suddenly, you have this sense of peace, not of acceleration, but of total clean sort of a peace where you can look out, for miles and miles, maybe 100 miles, and you gain this very, very unique perspective on what life is, is all about. And that's what it should be like in our walk with God, just to say every morning, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. You know, the Our Father, may thy, will, thy, will, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. When you do that, everything in life, believe me, when you're jumping out of an airplane, you're really not thinking about your cares or worries. You're thinking about one thing, you know, pulling the, uh, the ripcord and will the canopy open. You don't think about all these cares and worries, as Jesus said. You know, the, the gospel is planted in someone's hearts, and then all their worries kind of choke it out. Uh, life becomes so much simpler, so much simpler when you abandon yourself to God's will. It doesn't mean it's easy. It's easier to make decisions. They're more clear. The answers, the, the direction is more clear. But it, it means get ready for the ride of your life. You're going to ride in big waves. It's, it's a lot of fun, but it's also a real challenge. Um, so get ready for the type of adversity that doesn't come from drama caused by your own foolishness, but the sort of adversity in it that becomes an adventure because you are seeking a, a partnership with God. You're seeking to yield your life to him and cooperate with him on the great adventure that he has planned for you. The gospel is good news. Jesus has, has come for you personally, and he wants you to invite, invite you into his, in, you, him into your heart Abandon yourself to his will, ask him to forgive you, and say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done, and then get ready for the big ride. We're talking to a gentleman today, our co-adventure guy today, who had us lived a life like that. He lived a really successful life, but the question is, is if, you're, if you're successful in business or successful in sports, or, or in, I do, if you have a lot of achievements, does that equal happiness? Aristotle said happiness comes by living a life of virtue. And Paul said, happiness comes by living a life of faith, hope, and love, and living a life of virtue. So uh, we have as our guest today, uh, Tom Peterson. You know all about him. You may not know his name necessarily, but his name is the, Catholic come, the Catholics Come Home, uh, things that you see on, on uh, television and his ministry um, uh, on, as, a, as a TV producer and author and a Catholic evangelist. I, I'm sure you know of him. If not, you're going to get to know him today. So welcome to our show, Tom Peterson. Thank you so much. Good to be with you, Baron. Uh, good to be with your audience. 
Hey, tell us uh, a little bit, Tom. Uh, a lot of times when people get involved in ministry, people really don't know their backstory. Can you tell us, just kind of give us the, and I don't want necessarily the condensed version. I want the dramatized version. <laughs> <laughs> so I was an advertising executive, uh, an overachiever, coming out of Arizona State University. Well, wait a minute, more, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, wait. Yeah. I want you to go further back. Because oh. I know when you were young, you faced a lot of adversity, as a lot of us do. Oh. Um, yeah, wait, yeah, I want to yeah. go back to that. So I was born. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is that, part? that was a tough one. <laughs> yeah. Um, in fact, I was born a couple days ago, and my birthday was on July 14th, so uh, pretty recently uh, celebrated that. Um, yeah, when I was a kid, I, I guess I was a rule follower, so the bullies used to beat me up for listening to the teacher and doing the right thing. And uh, it uh, implanted in me kind of a seed of justice, and that's how we got into uh, pro-life and evangelization, uh, doing good things. But as time went on, I guess, you know, I was— I, I was always beat up for being the good kid, so part of me wanted to not be the good kid. Um, but I was—I uh, still had it in my heart to be an overachiever and use my God-given talents and pray and so forth. Um, made a few mistakes, uh, you know, as a kid as life went on. Um, I remember picking on a kid who was uh, wimpier than me, uh, and it made me feel really bad. And you know, I asked for his forgiveness later, and I—I I haven't forgotten it to this day. That, you know, we're all kind of guilty of that. But you know um, what? But you know what, Tom? Yeah. It reminds me of uh, Will Ferrell, Talladega Nights. Mm. I don't know if you've seen that show, where he said, "Everybody knows, everybody knows that, you know, you only get love if you win." Uh, you know, well, everybody knows that. That goes without saying. You don't get love, and if if you're not first, you're last. You know, so yeah. that was kind of the mentality of that overachiever part of you, wasn't it? If I can prove myself, I'll be yeah. more acceptable. Yeah, exactly. You know, to to fit in and to have some stature. And, and really just doing the right thing is really what God calls us to do, not to be successful or whatever. But obviously that continued. And, and uh, as I got into high school, uh, you know, the 4.0 was my goal, being top of the class and, and overachieving. And same with college. In fact, I had six scholarships and I actually made money going to college, uh, which is rare. You know, I it's actually rare. I never, I've never heard of that before. <laughs> yeah, I came out with more money than I went in with. And I even had jobs where I was like a travel agent in college where I would take people on group trips, uh, big corporations. And here I am like 19 years old taking people all over the world. And uh, I'd make thousands of dollars. And I said, man, this sure beats working at McDonald's. Um, so God had given me kind of a talent to be creative and start my own ad agencies in college and continue on after college. Um, and I was making really good money. I was doing well. But um, my faith started fading when I moved away uh, to Columbus, Ohio, and I was all alone. And I tried to join things, and I just didn't fit in at church. Wait, 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 so, uh, uh, jo join uh, things at church, like okay. Clubs at church and stuff. And, you know, they weren't really strong back then, um, and I just didn't feel a part of it. So I'd go to Mass, but that was about it. And then I'd hang out with my buddies on the weekend, and a lot of times we'd go drinking or whatever. Um, so you know, my slide, I guess, started when I was lonely and living uh, by myself in Columbus, Ohio, um, and then moved back to Arizona and started my own ad agencies, a uh, second and a third one, and did really, really well. Got married uh, to a wonderful Catholic girl. Uh, never missed mass, but I knew my life was out of control, Bear, because like all I cared about was more and more goals, more and more achievement. Well, you know, and the thing... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. That, I was going to say, even though I went to Mass, I felt I felt uh, empty and out of control. I felt out of sorts. One of the early church fathers talked about that, that, that kind of that always wanting more uh, yeah. achievement or whatever. And he talked about it. What if you saw a man walking down the street and he was scooping air into his mouth as if to eat it? In mm -hmm. other words, all he was doing was filling himself with more emptiness. And not that there isn't a great need for excellence in our lives of people that pursue uh, business goals and are excellent in that area. But if that's the focus of where you think you're going to find your meaning, you're going to end up pretty empty. Yeah, we have to use our God-given talents. That's part of stewardship. But I think when they surpass helping others or following God's will, that's where we get into the danger zone. And it's easy to do as American business people. Uh, you know, and I'm a member of Legatus, uh, which is a Catholic CEO group. And, you know, one of the things we do is to, you know, study, live and spread the faith. And part of it is that balance in business where our Catholic faith has to be paramount and, uh, uh, impl you know, has to be implemented in every decision we make for our companies, our families, and our own lives. So uh, that was the start of everything. And really, it all changed on a dime when I went on a married men's retreat. 
A couple of buddies invited me on this retreat. I finally didn't have a reason not to go. And I went and in front of the Eucharist, I had a supernatural experience with the Holy Spirit. Well, I want to uh, talk a little bit more about that. Um, you're, at, at that stage in your life, you were married. You had how many children, or did you have children? Uh, two out of three, I think. Maybe the and third you had one the house was on the way. With the, you had the, one of the high, nicest houses probably on the street, a couple of nice yeah. cars. Yeah, on a, on a big lake and a couple of nice sports cars. And you yet know. there was a feeling of, is that all there is? Well, I, you know, I obviously had, I also had a home in the mountains and, and I just kept amassing more and more stuff. And I was in my early 30s, kind of the age of Mother Teresa's conversion. And, you know, I went on this retreat because I knew I was out of control and I knew I was still longing for something in my heart to kind of go back to that basic faith I had as a kid. We're talking with Tom Peterson. We're going to take a little bit of a break. And when we get back, we're going to talk about how Tom Peterson is exactly like Mother Teresa. (laughs) (laughs) I'd like to know that. I didn't realize. (laughs) This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to our uh, YouTube channel, the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel. Press the subscribe button. Uh, because when you go to YouTube, you can not only just listen to this show on the EWTN network, but you can also watch the YouTube version of it and share it with your families. You can be car- part of our evangelistic outreach. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite the men out there to go to deepadventure.com look for the warning sign in red that says danger do not push this button it's the invitation for men only our websites for everybody our all of our teaching all of that we do is really for everyone but this particular page is for men only you press that button and it's an invitation to join bears man cave it's a secret facebook group you cannot join it by looking for it on facebook you have to go to our website and then you become a part of a brotherhood of men uh, where we challenge each other, we, 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 we ask for prayer, we write inspiring messages. I post a lot of short video clips that no one else sees. And we also, about every two or three weeks, have a vo- what we call the Zoom software, the video chat software, where we all can see each other and we talk story with each other. And we're currently reading through one of my books, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. So it's just a great place to develop brotherhood and then from that environment learn to develop a small group, small men's groups, maybe in your own parish if you don't have one. Uh, but it's, a, it's just a great group of guys, and we inv- invite you men to join Bears Man Cave. We have with us today a very, very rare guest. In fact, I would say I've never actually had anybody, anybody on my show before who compared himself to Mother Teresa. We have Tom Peterson on the show. Oh. Tom, aloha. <laughs> No, but you were saying. <laughs> no, I, we just hit uh, our calling oh, at the same age. That's oh, the only thing we have in common. And oh, we're Catholic. That's, oh, we have two that's things what it is. You just kind of <laughs> slid that in there. Yeah, okay. Mother Teresa and you. Don't okay. get me in trouble. I oh, got another my, problem. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, I, maybe, yeah. So um, we'll, we'll kind of let you get away with that. But you were saying, though, you had this. Go ahead. You were telling us your story of. of all right, of, all right. Three, th- three things. Oh, you're like, like Mother Indian Teresa. Food. Go right I ahead. Like, I like Indian food. No, I just said <laughs> I had our, uh, my calling around the same age, you know. And so it, at, at this retreat in front of the Eucharist, the Holy Spirit, uh, I opened my heart. I, I wanted to be prayed over, and the Holy Spirit jumped in. And I remember God's words in my heart, and they weren't heard by my ears, but heard by my heart, were to downsize and simplify. And I knew exactly what those two things meant, Barrett, was that God was calling me. Uh, to slow down in my busyness of life, in my goals, in my um, uh, accomplishments, so that I had time for God and I had time for others, which is the first and greatest commandment. And by putting that in the right priority, the adventure would begin. And, you know, when God wraps his loving arms around you like that, you can't help but say yes. And so I did, and the lights were— like, You were like, what can I do, Lord? What can I do yeah. for you? Like, you want there to be oh, yeah. a mission you, from him. You feel a love like you haven't felt before, and obviously you realize it. A lot of the men listening realize it, and it's just, you know, it's it's a profound love that you just can't explain any other way. You know that you know that you know when you had this conversion experience, and it was on January—I'm sorry, it was on June 22nd, 1997. It was the summer solstice, uh, the longest day of the year, and the readings were from St. John that— Uh, He must increase, Jesus must increase, and I must decrease, which was very poetic of God uh, to put it in perspective that we need more God in our souls and less of us. And um, that was the beginning of an incredible adventure that's been over 22 years now. So what was was it that God—well, first I want to ask you a little question. 
Yeah. What is it, before we get that, to that place, that you found in business? Mm. Uh, you know, because so many people just are so down on business people. You know, they have this thing, they're greedy, mm. all this. I have found, as, I've, as my dad had a ministry, he was a Catholic deacon, and he had, a, he had a ministry where he had presidents, only presidents of companies would come to their retreat house. At that time, they were living up in Minnesota in the North Woods called Eagle's Rest. Hmm. And only presidents would come. And I found excellent, excellent people. Uh, oh, yeah. and, and so what are the virtues that uh, an excellent, uh, what are the virtues that are needed and are developed as someone pursues a business the way the Lord would have them pursue it. Yeah. And, and obviously I meet a lot of these stellar business people who are also stellar and first and foremost, stellar Catholics in Legatus. And it gives you great hope that we have some really incredible people running companies and, and with great stewardship. But as a kid, I was in junior achievement and most of my friends didn't want to sell anything, didn't want to go into business. They wanted to uh, pursue other avenues, but I felt it as a calling because I love communicating with people uh, and I love engineering kind of a win-win situation where if I have a product or a service and somebody needs it, then by us communicating, um, they can actually win and get something accomplished by buying my product or service. And so in my heart, I didn't want to sell something to somebody who didn't need it, but I did want to make that match so that they would get something out of it. Uh, I would accomplish the goal and it would be kind of a joint uh, reciprocal um, relationship. And so I love that part of business and I, and I love the communications part of it. And when you really think about it, isn't evangelization the same way that you've got somebody who's searching for something, you present Jesus and his good news of salvation. They open the door and like you both win because, you know, we get super excited and addicted to promoting Christ because we know how cool it is for that conversion to have happened in our hearts and our lives. We see the fruit from it. We want others to have it, but obviously they have to have an open heart. They have to be a willing prospect for that, as we would say in business. So um, I, I think God was preparing me at a young age uh, for this business career to be an evangelist down the road and to start Catholics Come Home and Virtue Media Pro-Life and give me those tools in, in business that would also apply in faith and evangelization. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a big four CPA. I work for Deloitte Touche mm -hmm. and also for Price Waterhouse. People don't know that. They think I'm just kind of a surf bum or something. But, but yeah, and I still, I know, and, I, and I also developed my own CPA practice, and now I have just a small boutique one that I, I still I care for. But but I, 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 having been in that position, whether working in the big four, looking at the Fortune 100 companies, or as a small as a CPA firm with, with clients that are, have, have smaller businesses, I've really been able to see their lives. One of the questions I used to ask them is, when is enough enough? Right. Uh, what are, are you, are, is, is just, well, I wanna, I'm going to add this store and this store and this store, and then I'm going to um, uh, go to a different city and add a new business here, and I'm going to add a new business there. And that can be very well and good. That could definitely be the Holy Spirit at, uh, challenging you to go from being a, a one, sto a one a location sort of business to multiple, multiple location enterprise. But you do have to ask yourself, is it the Lord leading me? And is it going to be consistent with my overall goal, which is my personal relationship with God and taking care of my families? And that's where you kind of need that relationship you know, I, uh, uh, of other, um, other business owners yes. uh, who really understand the fact that when you first start a business, you work so hard and everything just kind of feels good at, at night. You, you know, you're working, you're, you're, you're birthing this business, really. And, and you, you're able to finally, you know, quit at 9 o'clock at night and go to sleep. But then at 2 in the morning, you, your, head, your eyes pop open and you go, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. you know? And I, I get that. Uh, you know, that's why I love to speak to Legatus and why I think a, a group like Legatus uh, is so important. Because uh, it, it, when you can't really go talk to an employee about some of the things you're, you're dealing right. with. You can't talk to your best friends because they're like a lot of times as you as you as you become more and more successful in life financially, people really can't relate with you anymore or deal with the issues mm -hmm. that you're dealing with. So uh, you need to have that sort of um, cle that sort of relationship with people that are kind of in the same boat and can really get what you're talking about and maybe have been there before. Can you give us just a minute or two more about what the the the, the relationships within Legatus and what it what what it if someone wanted to kind of become a member, how, 
what sort of profile do they need to have to be a member and, and how do they do that? Sure. You've got about a minute, about two minutes to do that. Sure. So um, legatus.org is the website. You can go there and you can see the requirements. Basically, you have to be a, a CEO or a business uh, president of a, a corporation that has enough employees and enough you know, financial um, income each year. And you can see the criteria online at legatus.org. Uh, and it's for uh, spouses. So if the woman is the executive, she'll bring her husband. If the man is the executive, he'll bring his wife. And it's a couples thing, which is great. So it starts uh, locally at your local chapter with uh, confession, rosary, mass, uh, social time, a dinner, and a speaker uh, once a month. And it's all over the United States and in different parts of the world now. Um, but I've been involved for about 18 years. But I'll give you an example of one businessman that I recruited for Legatus, who's really a hero of mine and a good friend and serves on our board. Larry Blanford was president of Green Mountain Coffee when they brought Keurig cups to the world. And his story about that is incredible. Uh, it was sitting on the shelf for years, and they tweaked one thing, and all of a sudden now Keurig is a worldwide phenomenon. I had about 10 cups of them at my sister's house <laughs> yeah. the last weekend. <laughs> who, who would have thought? You know, and, and then they not only put their coffee in some of the cups, but they put other other people's coffee in their cured cups. So it's really, you know, it's a great business model. But he was in Vermont running Green Mountain Coffee. And the agenda there was for Green Mountain to be forced to pay for transgendered operations. And he says, you know, I'm Catholic. We don't believe in this. This isn't part of who we are. But Legatus gave him a Defender of the Faith Award, or I think it was called that, because he stood up and found that as a multinational corporation, that they could actually get around this and not have to succumb to that rule and live by their moral and faith standards and their business acumen. They didn't want to do it as a business either, but he, he prayerfully found a way uh, using his skills as a Catholic business person to not go along with that agenda. And I think that's what God calls us to do. Iron sharpens iron. You've got uh, a show and a, a movement that helps men uh, sharpen and hone other men to be true apostles of Christ. And he doesn't want us to be milk toast or mediocre. He calls us to be uh, real champions of the faith, heroes for the faith. And I think um, that's the beauty of Legatus. It brings like-minded Catholic CEOs together to do just that. We're, and that's what Catholics Come Home is all about, too. We're talking to Tom Peterson. He is the founder of Catholic Come, CatholicsComeHome.org. Uh, if you're listening, Tom, do you go speak to uh, a lot of Legatus also? You... Yeah, I do. I've spoken about 85 chapters, some four times, and uh, I do a lot of parish missions, well, well, men's conferences, and so forth. So uh, Catholic catholicscomehome.org. And if you're listening, I love to speak to Legatus groups, too. I really speak that just mainly to men's conferences and yeah. to Legatus. I think they, they like me to come because I get them, because I'm a CPA. Yeah. You know, but, yeah, okay. exactly. All right, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you uh, to go to our website, uh, and I'm going to I'm going to challenge you guys. I've kind of brought up Will Ferrell earlier today, uh, comparing, uh, <laughs> talking about talking with Tom Peterson, our guest here. But I got something for you guys. If you get my book, deep, if you have my book, Deep Adventure: The Way of Heroic Virtues, look in the front cover and see if you find something kind of unusual in the place where I thank different people. And if you do, and you write to our website, uh, I will uh, will will send you a long ride home cast member t-shirt. So if you have my book, Deep Adventure of the Way of Heroic Virtue, look at the place where I thank people at the beginning. And if you find something a little bit unusual there, it's so funny because I got this by my publishers and my editors and everyone else. They had no idea that I snuck a little thing in there in the, in the thank you section. So check it out. If you figure it out, write to me. We'll send you a, three, a free Long Ride Home cast member t-shirt. But we do want to let everybody know that at deepadventure.com, uh, my book, Deep in the Way of a Surfing Guide to the Soul and Deep Adventure of the Way of Heroic Virtue are there. We have our, our uh, Long Ride Home coffee cups, our Long Ride Home motorcycle patches and pins. But we have this, this new thing, uh, the Long Ride Home cast member t-shirt, and you are welcome to go there, and, and, and uh, you're able to buy one on our website, and that helps support our ministry. So uh, we really appreciate you doing that. We're talking with Tom Peterson from Virtue Media and Catholic Come, CatholicsComeHome.org. Uh, you've seen him. Uh, you've seen these, these uh, the little vignettes on uh, EW10 and other places. So, Tom, welcome back to the show. Thank you. 
Yeah, in fact, they've probably seen him on secular TV more than even EWTN because we've aired in all of the bowl games with our coach Lou Holtz ad. We've aired uh, our Christmas commercial on all the major movies, uh, CBS and NBC. And for, gosh, over, you know, 10 years, maybe 20 now, they've, they've been on national TV and uh, we praise God for that. We now have him in nine languages, Bear. So we've got uh, a big campaign coming up in Poland. And, uh, you know, I was saying as we went to the last break that the beauty of Catholics Come Home is that it invites people who are, you know, who are maybe saying there's got to be more to this in life to, to really kind of explore that relationship with God for the first time or maybe come home to a faith that they had as a child and got distracted and, and kind of wandered away. But Christ calls us to throw out the rescue net and to spread this good news to others, not forcing them, but inviting them, like he invited me on that retreat uh, to find a better way. And, you know, when people open that door and they walk through it and they come back to the sacramental life with Christ, go to confession and get that car wash for their soul, they feel so incredibly good and renewed. And they, they realize, man, what have I been missing? And that's exactly what the evil one's trying to do. He's trying to distract us with things of the world that don't really fill that God-shaped hole in our heart, as St. Augustine said so well, our hearts are restless until they rest in thee. Um, and uh, he's got us hoodwinked. But it's our job to help remind people that God has a better plan, not only for this life, but for eternity. And when people then accept that invitation and explore it, it's like the domino effect where they go out and become many evangelists around the world too. And that's how we build the, the family of Christ uh, and help uh, change the world for the better. I want to talk about that, too, because uh, you can't compared yourself to Mother Teresa twice on our <laughs> show so far, and, and I have to say, I can really see, I, I really see that. Uh, Bear, you're going to have to go to confession for kind of stretching the truth <laughs> yeah. there. That's no, not but there's exactly some... <laughs> how I came down. <laughs> but there's something I said, kind I of... like Indian food. I had my calling at the same age, and uh, there's one other thing we had in common. <laughs> but there is something kind of cool, because you're, you're doing this big thing. You do this thing where, and I, we see it all over, uh, this, this using your marketing skills the way God created you. You're doing this, what someone, some might call a great thing, and you're reaching out to people. But what Mother Teresa also said is you may not be able to, you may not be doing great things for God, yeah. but what you do, do the little things with great love. Um, and yeah. so what we're asking you to do is in your kuleana, in your place in life, do great things within that do do great love. love love is something you do it's not something you feel i mean god said god so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son love wasn't it didn't say god so loved the world that he felt all warm and gushy inside you know yeah. he, he did something so you everyone there everyone there has someone that they can love and someone or some ones that they can love in a great way and some some are called to do these these kind of things like tom peterson is doing with uh, CatholicsComeHome.org and Virtue Media. I love that 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 saying. I think the tagline is something like, "If you have left the Catholic Church for any reason," mm -hmm. and there's a lot of reasons. Sometimes people drift. Sometimes they've really been wronged within the church. Mm -hmm. I was just actually really hungry for more of the Lord, yep. Tom, and I had experienced the care, the baptism of the Holy Spirit within the Catholic Church, but I wasn't surrounded by people that could point me. In, in right. a path to deeper and deeper, a deeper journey with the Lord. And so I saw other people around me that were non-Catholic, and I drifted that way because I don't really think I left the church, but the church kind of left me. I was there. I was ready. I was hungry. I wanted to be taught, and there was no one there to, to guide me. And it was only after my father, who became a deacon, began to uh, send me books on the early church fathers. And, that, and then I came roaring back. I was talking to someone at my sister's uh, wedding reception uh, in uh, Minneapolis last weekend, a real strong Christian, and he began to ask me, uh, I don't know how the, I think he asked me about my bracelet, and I began to talk about the early church fathers. I have a, a uh, you can see it kind of if you watch yep. it on YouTube. It's early church fathers uh, prayer that, I, that I'm a, a Benedictine oblate, and we pray the, the Jesus prayer, and I use these beads or this, this rope uh, around my hand to do that. And I began to talk about the early church fathers and about Anthony and about Augustine, about Athanasius and Cyril, and 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 it was like he had never heard of them. Mm. It's like wow. the Bible magically fell out of the sky, and then 1,500 years later, Martin Luther, you know, started the real church. And so, um, so there is something about Catholics for so many reasons have left. Maybe for whatever reason, for me, I just I left because I was looking for more, and after yeah. a while, I found I was swimming in the shallow end of the pool, and then I. 
loud. <laughs> oh my God. I have volumes of books in my house and I, I read ferociously, but for every book I finish, I think I get two more because I want to read about that. I want to read about that too. Which the is Catholic a great Church, thing. Yeah. The Catholic Church is so deep and, and rich. But well, let's just take a little segue back now. You were, yeah. you were talking about that moment. Uh, you, went on a, you went on a retreat. Can you tell us, tell us what happened uh, in your life at that moment and what happened? So, so after that Eucharistic experience with the Holy Spirit on the retreat, I, well, wait, wait, I started— I want, uh, uh, yeah. I want to hear about that Eucharistic experience. What happened? Well, I, I mean, I talked a little bit about it, that God called me to downsize and simplify my life, and the, the light switch went on. I said yes to God, and the adventure began. But then I started really seeking. Well, I, but I, know, I, I, Tom, I'm sorry. I really yeah. want people who have never had an experience like that okay. to, to experience it with you. What, what you t- tell us, you were kneeling, you were standing, and... No, I, I was I was being prayed over, and I went down on the floor like you see on TV, and it's the first and only time it's happened in my life. So wait a minute. So so you were what we call slain in the spirit. You were slain in the spirit. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit knocked you off your high horse like he did Paul. Oh yeah. And I'm laying on my back crying like a baby, and I felt God's warmth in in my soul, and I just I I felt the words downsize and simplify came to my heart. And again, you don't hear them with your ears, but it's infused wisdom. But what 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 did you feel when you said you felt God's warmth? What does that mean? I can't explain it. I, I can't explain it. Just you, you know that you know that you know there is a God. He loves you. He has a plan for you, and he's trying to call you into something better. It's and I do remember concepts he was teaching me, Bear. He was saying, you're living your life in the gray area, one foot in, in church and one foot in the secular world. You're, you're trying to choose between black and white and have the mushy middle. You're, you know, you're, you're kind of living in the mediocrity you got to choose right or wrong, me or not me, good or good or bad. I mean, you have to make the choice. So you this can't happened, this happened all in one moment of oh, a yeah. tremendous infusion of God's love. Oh, yeah, while well, I'm crying there on the floor. And and so it, it wasn't a conversation as much as it was a teaching and an invitation, and he didn't force me. But, but my yes, Lord, yes, I'll do it, um, was— was kind of the start of the adventure where the light switch went on. I felt like I could finally see and hear for the first time in my life. And yeah, then like I started ears, begging like your, God for more. It's like your ears pop open and yeah. way down. It, you know, I have a friend who's an evangelistic atheist, and I go, I try, I, I can argue empiricism, anything else, else with him, philosophy or whatever. But I said, deep down in my knower, I know. I remember yeah. the moment when yeah. he made him, he's like, it couldn't be more real than, than the sand I'm standing on, you know, right now. Yeah. I, I know that he's feeling now. And during that time of during that experience, a lot of people sometimes receive a charismatic utterance. Did you receive the gift of tongues then, or I, I, I did, but later on my cursio, um, I, oh, I did on my cursio. So, and you know, I want to I want to give a disclaimer now. My wife has a different experience. She walked with me on the journey, but her um, her epiphany of faith came in little pieces over time. And so sometimes God knocks the souls of the world who are on our high horse off of it, and we have a profound instant experience. And then other people, based on their personality, have kind of a slower drip uh, where the cup Mm -hmm. gets filled and it overflows eventually and they get it. So so I want to say that God works in different ways with different souls. So don't, I mean, not everybody's going to get knocked off their horse don't and that be, may not be the way that works for everybody. Yeah, don't be seeking experience, be seeking yeah. the Lord. My mother was yeah. like that. Uh, she had that that exact same sort of uh, of, of slow progression. And uh, But I mean, it's because it's a personal relationship. It's not like right. that God's m- making you a cookie cutter Catholic or Christian. We're talking with Tom Peterson. You guys, this is the man who's behind Virtue Media and CatholicsComeHome.org. We're going to talk a little bit more about his personal testimony, see if we can squeeze it all in. But we want to invite you to go to his website, CatholicsComeHome.org. You can find out more about how you can participate with them, and also you can go there and invite him to come and speak, uh, especially you um, members of Legatus Goddess know him so well. Uh, we also want to invite you to go to our website, DeepAdventure.com, and become a member of our mug club. You get a long ride home coffee cup, and when you do that, you actually, at some level, one of the, one of the Patreon giving levels, you actually get all uh, all episodes of Long Ride Home. So season one has been airing on EWTN and the Long uh, Armed Forces Network and iTunes and Google Play and Prime Video. You can get all of those. Season two is airing on EWTN. You can get all of those. And as we complete each episode, the director's episode is released to you maybe a year before it airs on EWTN. Plus, you get all of our radio shows months in advance. So uh, go to our website, deepadventure.com, and help us out. Uh, become, a ma- become a Patreon donor, and, and uh, we will thank you by uh, providing you with that early access and, and extra 
uh, extra things that we do too. After we do this show, uh, Tom and I are going to take five extra minutes and do a special five minute segment that only Patreon donors uh, have access to. So thank you though for your patronage. This is Bear Wozniak uh, with the Deep Adventure dot com ministry and we'll be right back with more of the bear wasnick adventure aloha and welcome back to the bear wasnick adventure our guest today is tom peterson uh this is the man that the lord spoke to and said start catholics come home dot org and virtue media and uh, he was just we were just beginning that testimony where god had spoken to him uh uh in that way that is uh, that internal knowing that you know what God's saying to you. And then, so Tom, carry on with us from that point when you had that, that conversion experience, the first conversion experience. Right. And I want to get this point in because I think it's the most important point of our interview that um, as I, you know, beg God, what do you want me to do with my life? I had two dreams one night. One was that I was producing some sort of Catholic video, which ended up becoming the Evangelicals and the Catholics Come Home Apostolate. We have a primetime show and it's uh, going into its sixth season uh, on uh, EWTN, uh, Sunday nights at 8.30, Monday nights at 6.30, Saturday mornings at 5.30 Eastern. Um, and all of this great stuff that's happened worldwide happened as a calling after that retreat and our pro-life work at Virtue Media. But here's the point I want to make, that God implanted talents within each of us mm. and charisms and gifts and a personality. And when he calls us and when we say yes— the devil and his minions are going to try to convince us that our life's going to get boring. We're going to lose our freedom, <laughs> that it won't be fun anymore, that it'll be a lot of rules and, and everything will get boring. And it's just the opposite, that when we say yes to our vocational calling by God, our life becomes an extraordinary adventure. It becomes heroic, as you've mentioned and talked about a number of times, and is part of your apostolate. And so the most incredible thing I, you know, the epiphany I had was that God gave me the very talents in advertising. He, you know, when I was a, a a five-year-old, I narrated, "'Twas the night before Christmas to the entire school and all the parents, and I couldn't even read at that time, but I, I, I did so as a start of my public speaking career. So you look back and you realize that God has already implanted in each of us a certain set of talents, gifts, charisms, interests, hobbies, whatever, because he's going to use those for the kingdom if we then get out of love, give those things back to him and say, Lord, you know, not for my glory and my will, but for yours be done. Well, you and sound, so, yeah, go ahead. Go, go yeah, ahead. I sound like you. Uh, <laughs> Well, yeah, you but you sound really just... bored. You sound really bored with life. <laughs> Try to get but, more you know, evocative. What? But you and I would be the first to tell people that when you say yes to God and you continue on this adventure, it isn't easy. You know, no one promised you that it would be easy carrying the cross. It sometimes is heavy. But the beautiful part of it is you have a community of believers to help you carry that cross. You have a, a God who says, my burden is easy and light. I'll help you carry the cross. And it's part of it. You know, sometimes these televangelist preachers only give you the happy talk. Only the, you know, the prosperity stuff. And really, being a Christian means you're going to have incredible joys, incredible adventures with the Holy Spirit, incredible God moments, but you're also going to have some suffering because when we die to ourselves, it hurts. When we try to give up those, those you know, weaknesses in our personality, it hurts. And life is a double-edged sword. So, you know, one, one spiritual director says, God gives you the gift of eloquence with public speaking or a, a mind to think creatively. But the double-edged sword is the devil and his minions can hijack that. And, and you can be critical. You can use that as a sharp tongue to criticize others. Uh, you can be condescending to people who don't get it the way you may get it quickly. Uh, so all of our gifts and talents can be used in a good way, or they can be hijacked by the evil one. And we have to be on guard for that, because that's part of the spiritual walk as a Christian as well. And you're on guard with that. I was reading uh, yesterday uh, uh, Psalm 18, I think around verse 30. Uh, he trains my hands for war so that my hands can bend a bow of bronze. Okay, so he's mm -hmm. given me this, this, say, this physical ability to, to do it, and then he trains me in war. Yes, but, and, the here, but, but but what I want to say is, but the verse before that talks about yeah. how he takes me to the high places and makes my feet like a deer's feet. Yeah, it begins with prayer. It begins right. in the high places. It begins there because if even if you're aware of the fact that you have a two-edged sword and sometimes your gift of evangelism can become being a be, becoming just being a jerk, you know, yeah. over, by going overboard, and you say, okay, I need to fix that. No. You need to go in prayer and ask the Lord to help you to fix that. Yeah, Even surrender to God. 
-hmm. Everything that we do has to start being in the high places, and then he'll train us for war. But it starts in prayer. Yeah, and sometimes it's spiritual warfare. Sometimes it's our own weak will and our, our human tendencies after the fall. But I, I love Psalm 112, verse 7, that says, Steadfast hearts trust in the Lord. You know, really the bottom line is when, when we follow the way of Mother Teresa, and, and obviously, you know, St. Teresa of Calcutta learned a lot of her little way from the little flower, St. Therese of Lisieux. Uh, you know, we have these mentors and heroes in faith who have gone before us. So find some of those saints you can really relate to and use them as your MVPs. You know, we collected baseball cards as kids. Find those saints that you can really relate to that have charisms and personalities and and maybe even some weaknesses like, like we do and, and, and have worked around them to find out how do I bring them on this mission? And, you know, uh, somebody said they feel like they're driving a car. They bring their favorite saints with them as passengers in that car. And I love that analogy because it's really cool thinking of having a, a you know an SUV loaded up with your favorite saints who help you on this journey we call life. I think you, we, we would need a, we would need a bus or a train. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I got to tell you. I got to tell you when I when I uh, you know here in Florida where I am part of the year, um, I have this balcony where I I, I can sit over the ocean and, I, and that's my time of really study. In nice. Hawaii, um, I go down to the beach at night. I have a cigar down there, and, and I just love it because guys will, someone will text me, hey, what you up to? Oh, I was hanging out at the beach with some friends. So who's there? Oh, Thomas Aquinas, Augustine. <laughs> yeah, <you know>? yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's just great to have because I've been studying the life of Paul now for about a year and a half, and, and, I, and I, I realize before I start to study his words or study his life, hey, Paul, can you kind of come alongside me and help me out here, pray for me here, you know? It oh, yeah. is great. It is great to have our brothers and sisters here on earth and, our, and, the, and the, the, the saints that accompany us in heaven. Now, I'm going to give you a little secret, and I'll share it actually Is it about you and Mother Teresa? Or? No, no. It, I'll share it with you before the after show even. I like finding those saints that you haven't heard much of or the ones who are on their journey to formation who need another miracle. So, you know, obviously there's a guy named Father Gura who's a Dominican priest who literally died face down on the altar in Poznań, Poland, where my prabupcha or my great-grandmother's from. And he actually blessed, uh, I think he interceded for my grandson, Dominic, um, uh, when his eyes were really googly when he was young, and mm. the next day he could see fine and he registered. Mm. So I really have to give him credit for that miracle, uh, all, again, done through the glory of God and by God's power, not his own. But I like finding those little-known saints or saints on, in formation because, as I say, they don't get much business. So if, you're, if you really want the ear of, of, some, uh, you know, of somebody at the foot of, of Christ in heaven, go for some of those less-known saints and find out you know, who they are because they can become great advocates because they're not getting, you know, millions and millions of people asking them for intercession. You may be the only one today to give them some Oh, you business. get more so, attention that way. I don't know. It's just my theory. I don't know if, I don't know if well, there's any merit to it, but I like I like thinking about it. <laughs> I, love, I love my, my St. Jose del Rio, you know, from the yeah. uh, recently canonized, but before he was canonized, I mentioned him in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, the Viva Cristo Rey, the young man. Yes. You know, or, you know, and you know, but the problem is, the more you study the early the the, the, the saints of the church fathers, you just you actually do acquire a bus of of, okay. of saints that you really admire, and it's because they've had an impact on your life. And, uh, and, and bear, if I can, if I'd like to interject, uh, two books I really recommend: Saintly Solutions by Father Charles. I think it's Father Esper. Saintly Solutions by Father Esper. It, it gives you all of the uh, things we struggle with. It could be anger. It could be you know whatever. And it tells you what saints struggle with that, and how they overcame it. So that's a, a great way to find out saints that you can relate to. Maybe some that had weaknesses that you and I have, and that uh, could help you to overcome them. And then the other one is the Four Witnesses. You talked about the early church fathers. The Four Witnesses is a classic uh, with the early church fathers, where if anyone really studies the history of Christianity, th they'll become Catholic. I mean, it's just that it's you the Scott you know what? So well, well, you know, Cardinal Newman, I mean, yeah, and I, I have yeah. volumes and volumes of my books here are, are, are on history, the history yeah. of the church or the writings of the early church fathers. Uh, it really is true to know history is to become Catholic. It's shocking. Yeah. The last yeah. guest that I had uh, was, a, was a Baptist minister who was asked to do a little background on the early church, <laughs> how the early church uh, worshipped. Uh, one of our priests there, the same way, he was asked by his uh, uh, Pentecostal church to do a little thing on the, how the early church worshipped, because they thought they were going to find a Pentecostal church or a Baptist church, and what they've discovered is the Catholic church. And that's why your ministry, catholicscomehome.org, 
This is the church that was founded 2,000 years ago. This is the church that's full of hypocrites. I think it was yeah. G.K. Chesterton said that because the Catholic Church, why are we full of hypocrites? Because we never changed our teaching to accommodate our weaknesses. We hold yeah. to the ideals of Jesus Christ. You got 30, you got 30 seconds, Tom. What would your last, uh, what do you, what would your last words say before we got to roll, roll thunder out of here? God has an incredible adventure planned for each of us when we truly surrender to his will. And I invite you to look up the Surrender Novena by Father Delindo Rutolo. When we really truly surrender to his will, the adventure begins and we realize I didn't know what I didn't know. You know, the, right. I, I could have had a V8 moment. Like we, we, we really have a storehouse of joy and love uh, awaiting us, not only in this life, but in, in eternity, if we just go through that door. So I encourage everybody to go deeper, to surrender to God, uh, to learn from the saints, scripture, the sacraments, and um, uh, join us in this mission by coming to catholicscomehome.org or prolifevirtuemedia.org. And we, we thank you for your prayers and, and your collaboration. As my good friend, crazy Todd Robertson said, who towed my son into 80 foot surf, uh, 80, go big or go home. You know, guys, yeah. Catholic church, go big. There's, it's as deep and as wide as the ocean. Of course, even more than that. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. Uh, till next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit, aloha you, aloha, and uh, viva Cristo Rey. We'll see you next week. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Go to bearwasnick.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10 episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwasnick.com.